A concerning pattern is emerging about the extraordinary pressures of being in public life in 2023. A spokesman for Senator John Fetterman says he checked himself in for treatment for worsening depression as he worked to adjust to life in the Senate, one of millions of Americans battling depression. It's something his chief of staff says Fetterman has dealt with, quote, on and off his whole life, but only became severe in recent weeks. He is just the latest public figure to be open about how an excruciatingly partisan post-pandemic world is taking a serious toll, as we saw recently with the resignations of the leaders of New Zealand and Scotland. I want to bring in co-founder of Punchbowl News, Jake Sherman, former Missouri Secretary of State John Kander, who has been open about his own struggles with mental health, and also with us, Dr. Conley Cyrus. She is a psychiatrist in Washington, D.C., and a board member of the Committee to Protect Health Care. It's good to have all of you here. Secretary, uh, I don't want to conflate clinical depression with the extraordinary pressures these two women felt before they stepped down, but they have all absolutely experienced and talked about the viciousness that comes with being a politician today. Uh, the former First Minister of Scotland shared this. There is a much greater intensity, dare I say it, brutality to life as a politician than in years gone by. And I wonder how your own personal experience informs the lens through which you're watching what we've seen unfold over the last month or so. Uh, well, you know, my experience is a little different in that it's related to post-traumatic stress as a result of my deployment in Afghanistan. But So we are going to wait to try to see if we can get him back. But, but Jake, I, I've been interested in the reaction we've seen on Capitol Hill. Senator Tina Smith has been outspoken in the past about her own struggles with mental health, and she shared this on Twitter. Seeking help when you need it is a sign of strength, not weakness, something that John is demonstrating for all of us. Overall, as I said, the reaction has been supportive. Is it an overstatement to see it as a sign that we are coming at least some way in understanding these struggles or maybe other people in Congress better than anybody get it? Well, two things are going on, Chris. Number one, yeah, I do think that that um, struggling with mental health uh, challenges is uh, becoming more commonplace in society just overall. I mean, we detailed in our morning edition this morning um, uh, Thomas Eagleton, who in the 1960s and 70s was forced off of a, of a presidential ticket after talking about his mental health struggles. Now people are just mostly gracious when someone has a problem like this. But I would say that this is, Chris, a, a big departure from the norm, right? I mean, you usually see on Capitol Hill people hide their health conditions or people get propped up by staff or by family for too long. And that and that's a difficult, uh, uh, re, a difficult reality of being on Capitol Hill is that people grow old and people don't want to confront that fact. And you see members of Congress walking around the building, uh, a shadow of them for their former self you see it today we've seen it in past congresses and it's just it's sad to see but uh, the reaction vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, Senator Fetterman has been has been uh, heartening to see let's say that at, at the least I mean this is somebody who had a stroke on the campaign trail uh, did you know clearly slowed down during the campaign and then uh, returned and got to Washington has to deal with a grueling schedule plus the fact that he has trouble processing uh, uh, auditory remarks and has to carry around an iPad with closed captioning. I mean, this is an exhausting job even for somebody who's very healthy, very young, very spry. Somebody who's suffered something as traumatic as a stroke, I, I can't imagine how arduous this is. Uh, Jason Kander, uh, he, he mentioned Thomas Eagleton, and I mean, later, uh, the guy at the top of the ticket, Walter Mondale, said he regretted asking him to step down. So, uh, I mean, there, I guess there has been a change, but I can only imagine also how difficult it is to say I need help or to say I've gone to get help. I, I just, uh, again, given your experience as someone who has been in the public eye, your observations. Well, the first thing I'd say is that we should all remember that Thomas Eagleton then served a couple more terms in the U.S. Senate and was hugely impactful uh, after that happened. Um, so certainly in this scenario, I think that's something to be remembered. Uh, the second thing I'd say is that you know, my experience uh, has been uh, that what Senator Federman is going to experience is, is this. One, uh, he's going to get better. Um, we're very good at treating all sorts of uh, kinds of, uh, of mental health challenges now. I, I, I'm not a clinician. I'm not going to speak to what I think is going on. All I can say is that if someone undergoes a stroke and then goes through a campaign and doesn't have the opportunity to deal with the 
the trauma that is, uh, you know, that stroke, like at some point you're going to need to get help. Um, and the fact that he's chosen to do this means, just like his doctors have said publicly, he's going to be back to feeling like himself. And then what he's going to experience is this. Everyone he encounters, and this is true whether you're a politician or a public person or not, is going to initially uh, treat him as if he's made of glass, right? He's going to be regarded through this lens for a while. And then eventually, people will move past him. They'll see him doing his job, and he'll be able to, to function fully. But what I think this leaves me with because look, because of my own experience, I'm kind of the person that, you know, Senator Fetterman is not one of them, but there are a lot of people who are in politics who call me when they think they might be having a problem. And I have a lot of these conversations. And what I've learned is, is that whether it's people in politics, whether it's just people walking around the street in the United States of America right now, like half the people you meet at a minimum are going through some stuff. And if you're talking about people who are going to be in power, whether it's political life, corporate life, it doesn't matter. I would rather it be people who, is, who have dealt with their stuff as opposed to people who are suppressing their stuff and pretending it's out there. I think people who have dealt with their stuff are in a better position to make decisions for them. Yeah, Dr. Cyrus, and maybe somewhere in there is also the lesson because his, uh, his aide, uh, John Fetterman's aide, did say, you know, he had to uh, sort of escalate his recovery after he had his stroke in many ways because he was running for Senate. And, uh, you know, he wanted to be able to respond to questions. He sat down with one of our reporters for an interview. Uh, what do people need to know about the, the stresses of life today, post-COVID life, and the importance of having the time to be able to deal with them when they seem to be um, overwhelming? I, I think you just hit the nail on it. The fact is, is that Senator Fetterman has time and help available to take care of his mental health. As a psychiatrist, I'm really happy to see that. But as a psychiatrist who's worked on the Hill, I know how many people don't have access to mental health coverage. And I feel like I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this, but what are we doing about it? Again, he can go get help. He can take that time off. What do you say to my patients who are waiting for a week in an ER just to get admitted because there's not enough hospital staffing? What do you say to my patients who are moms who can't get out of bed, not law school students who need Adderall, um, but the moms who can't get out of bed because of the Adderall shortage and what's happening with that? And then lastly, what do you say with all the black, queer, female people who email me all the time looking for a provider? Perhaps if, again, mental health coverage was provided on par with physical health, I wouldn't be so responsible for answering these emails and all of the Fettermans and all the non-Fettermans would be able to get help and take time off, especially given since we are approaching, if not already in an epidemic of mental health issues. Dr. Kelly Cyrus, uh, Jason Cantor, Jake Sherman, I wish we could talk more. Thank you for being with us. I need to go to the